Bobo Perrault, Minister of Gender Equality, Child Development and Family Welfare, Mr. Springer, UN Resident Coordinator, UN Division Office, members of Diplomatic Corps, Mrs. Caperi, the President of the of the Ministry, Mr. Denu, Senior Lecturer and Head of Department of Special Educational Needs at the Mauritius Institute of Education, and also our resource person for today. Representative of religious bodies, senior officers and advisors of the ministry and council, distinguished guests, all protocol observed. Good morning. On behalf of the Ministry of Gender Equality, Child Development and Family Welfare, I have the pleasure to welcome you all at today's opening ceremony of the Interface Conference on Family Values, which is being organized on the occasion of the celebration of the International Day of Family. Today, the 15th of May, around the world, governmental, non-governmental organizations, and also the civil society are raising awareness on issues relating to families. And at the level of our ministry, we are also organizing a series of activities to highlight the importance that families have in our society. Ladies and gentlemen, UNDP is one of our key partners working towards the promotion of family welfare and also in addressing gender-based violence. Today we have among us Mr. Springer, the UN Resident Coordinator, UNDP, and I would like to invite him to raise the UN Secretary General message on this occasion. Thank you. The theme of this year's International Day of Families, Men in Charge, highlights the importance of gender equality and children's rights in our contemporary families. Allow me, first of all, to share with you the message of the United Nations Secretary General Mr. Ban Ki-moon, on the occasion of this 2015 International Day of Family. And I quote, <clears throat> Around the world, more women are becoming recognized as the equal partners and decision makers in their families as they should be, thus helping to ensure a conducive environment for the full and harmonious development of their children. Yet in too many circumstances, and in too many countries, discrimination against women and the disregard of children's rights remain built into family laws and government policies, and the prevailing social norms often condone and justify many discriminatory practices. The social and economic costs are felt by all. Discrimination and neglect often lead to violence, threatening women's and children's health, and limiting their chances to complete education and fulfill their potential. The cycle tends to continue into the next generation as children experiencing violence are more likely to resort to violence in their adult lives. Equitable social and economic development depends on the fair legal frameworks and social norms that support the rights of women and children. Discriminatory laws and practices that do not give equal rights to all and that suppress women's and children's rights have no place in contemporary families communities, societies, or nations. On this international day, let us resolve to change the legal and social norms that support male control over women, reinforce discrimination, and prevent the elimination of violence against vulnerable family members. As we shape a new sustainable development agenda and strive for a world of dignity for all, let us stand united for women's and children's rights in families and in societies at large. And so, Ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations Systems does understand that family values remain important uh, on many different levels. Owing to the rapid social and economic and demographic transformations, families do find it more and more difficult to fulfill their numerous responsibilities. Many struggle to overcome poverty and adequately provide for both their younger and their older family members. And it is also more and more difficult for families to reconcile their work and family responsibilities and to maintain the important intergenerational bonds. The United Nations is committed to support Mauritius at all possible levels in relation to family values. A recent example is we've just concluded the visit of Ms. Rosa Cornfield Matt, the United Nations Human Rights Council independent expert on the enjoyment of all human rights by older persons. Her comprehensive report on her mission to Mauritius will be presented to the United Nations Human Rights Council in September. And I hope that many of you here had an opportunity to 
discussed with her during her visit. To close, I would like to take this opportunity to commend, on behalf of the United Nations system, the laudable efforts of the Ministry in the Advancement of Family Welfare and Mauritius, and particularly in partnering with faith-based organizations in this endeavor. I wish you all fruitful discussions during the course of the day. Thank you. The International Day of Families is observed on the 15th of May every year. Proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in 1993, it reflects the, the importance that the international community attaches to families. The International Day of Families provides an opportunity to raise awareness of issues relating to families and to increase knowledge of the social, economic and demographic processes affecting families. The theme retained by the United Nations this year to celebrate the day is Men in Charge, Gender Equality and Children's Rights in Contemporary Families. This demonstrates that the 2015 observance of the International Day of Families aims to mobilize support for action to ensure gender equality and rights of children within families as well as prevent family violence through legal frameworks and a variety of program interventions. As it happens, the theme reflects the mandate of my ministry, which has adopted the theme of more family, more responsibility for the celebration of the family day. To mark the International Day of Families 2015 in Mauritius, for the first time, my ministry is organizing an interfaith conference on family values today. This conference will highlight the importance of families and values and their relevance in modern society. Throughout this conference, the richness of philosophies about family life and values will be explored. You will be provided with the opportunity to reflect upon and discuss the growing need for family values in this rapidly developing economy, which has been affected by growing international influence and the effects of globalization. You, as members of religious organizations, wield a strong influence on your congregations. You also have the strength of sacred texts on your side from which you can guide members of the congregations towards the path of righteousness. Taking into consideration that Mauritian families have strong ties with religion, my ministry sought your assistance through the Shared Faith Belief Program to address social ills, particularly domestic violence. I must commend your commitment on the Shared Faith Belief Program. Today, we have 26 organizations working actively through the program with my ministry. The family is the most important unit of society. According to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, I quote, the family is the natural and fundamental group unit of society and is entitled to protection by society and the state." Unquote. However, in recent years, the family unit has come under attack. One of the major reasons for this is the erosion of values, especially family values. It is high time that we put a stop to the crumbling and degradation of values in our society. 
Together, we need to ensure that ours is one which is a happy, well-adjusted, and peaceful society where each and every one of us can thrive. To achieve this, we all need to work together towards a common goal. By all, I mean the government, civil society, NGOs, and of course, you too as members of religious organizations. May I add that my ministry has conducted capacity building programs to further equip members of religious organizations with the necessary skills and tools to address the problem of domestic violence, to which they have responded positively. I am informed that in the last two years, 893 members of 26 organizations participated in the capacity building programs. They made a pledge to commit themselves to addressing domestic violence. I sincerely applaud their commitment to this program. Today, the Interfaith Conference will give you the opportunity to ponder on the reasons why social and family values are losing ground, leading to a degradation of social mode. After this conference, you will be able to transmit the solutions to these problems amongst your congregations. We are privileged to have with us Mr. Denou, Senior Lecturer, Head of the Special Education Needs Department and Facilitator, Value-Based Education at the Mauritius Institute of Education, who will act as facilitator in this conference. I understand that at the end of the conference, a framework for a charter for family values will be elaborated. A further meeting with religious organizations will be held to finalize the charter, which could serve as a guide to Mauritian families. And finally, in the context of the celebration of the International Day of Families 2015, my ministry is organizing a series of other activities as follows. On the 16th May 2015, there will be a marriage enrichment program at Goldcrest Hotel, Catrobo. On the 17th May, a family day will be held at Montchoisy Public Beach. On the 30th of May, a treasure hunt will be organized at Pompeius Botanical Garden. On the 7th of June, a kite competition will take place at Medin Garden Health Trap. And on the 21st of June, another kite competition will be held at Rosebell Stadium. So on this note, I hereby declare this conference open.